Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a video on the subject of atrial fibrillation and uh, this video is going to be particularly relevant to those people who have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation which means that the atrial fibrillation can come and go of its own accord. And patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation seem to tolerate atrial fibrillation very badly. Uh, partly this is because the atrial fibrillation is unpredictable. It can come on or it is seemingly unpredictable. It can come on at any time. Uh, they don't know when it's going to go off. And for some reason, patients who have paroxysmal atrial fibrillation seem to notice symptoms a lot more. So they can get, they can feel very tired during an attack. They can feel dizzy. They can feel breathless. They obviously have palpitations and they don't know what to do about it. And and they just simply usually they have to just wait it out and they have no idea when it's going to finish or they have to go to hospital when it in itself is um, hor horrendously you know stressful etc now what we do know is that although not every paroxysm can be predicted there are some very definite triggers that can bring on episodes of atrial fibrillation um, and those triggers can be very subjective. So although we do research and we look and see what could trigger off atrial fibrillation, uh, everyone has different triggers. So I wanted to do a video where patients uh, themselves came forward and volunteered their triggers. So I found a really interesting study, and this was uh, by a guy called Hansen, H-A-N-S-S-O-N, et al., and it was published in the BMC Cardiovascular Disorders Journal in 2004. And what these guys did is they asked 100 people who had paroxysmal atrial fibrillation what they felt were their main triggers for atrial fibrillation. The uh, the advantage of identifying your triggers is obvious that if you know something is likely to trigger off your atrial fibrillation, if you can avoid it, then it's less likely that you'll have the atrial fibrillation. So they took 100 patients. The, there were 72 men and 28 women. Um, and uh, they asked them, you know, uh, what brings on your atrial fibrillation? Now, just before we talk about that, it's worth knowing that the patients range from as young as 22 years to as old as 79 years. 76%, 76 out of the 100 patients were actually on medications to reduce the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, but 24 weren't taking any medications at all. Um, now, the interesting thing was 72% of patients actually said that we feel that our atrial fibrillation comes on at around about the same time of the day. So the majority of them said that their symptoms seem to come on between 6 to 9 p.m., uh, but also from midnight to 9 the next day. However, the least number of people said that their symptoms started between 9 and 3 p.m., which is interesting. Uh, I don't know necessarily why that is, uh, but certainly evenings and night seem to predominate as a time when the AF would start. 35% of this group actually said that they woke up with atrial fibrillation. 31% um, said, look, my atrial fibrillation seems to start at rest. Uh, and 22% said, actually, mine seems to start after I've done physical exertion. Okay. And the, for the majority of patients, 64% of patients, um, the attack of atrial fibrillation lasted less than one day, whereas for 17%, it could go on from between one day to any time between one and seven days. And none of them said that their episodes went on for more than seven days. And now in terms of triggers, it's very interesting because the vast majority, 54% of patients said mental stress Okay, mental stress seemed to trigger their AF off. 42% said physical stress seemed to trigger their AF off. 41% um, that when they were tired, they seemed to be more likely to have AF. So if they hadn't slept the night before, if they were particularly tired, um, that seemed to bring on episodes of AF. 34% said any form of alcohol. Okay, in terms of alcohol, it seems that red wine and uh, uh, liquor uh, seem to affect the majority of patients. So red wine, 26% um, of patients said that red wine seemed to bring on their symptoms, whereas 16% said white wine seemed to bring on their symptoms. 26% also said liquor of any sort can bring it on. What about coffee? Now, coffee has been hugely debatable because a lot of people say, well, maybe coffee doesn't cause AF, etc. But when you ask a bunch of patients, 25%, one in four, 
said that coffee seems to bring on their symptoms. Infections can bring on their symptoms in about 22%. Cold drinks, drinking something very cold can bring it on or did bring it on in about 8%. A large meal seems to bring it on um, for some patients, but only three out of 100 patients said a large meal seemed to bring it on. Food, there were certainly food triggers. So 18% of this group said food of some sort brings it on, uh, in particular onions. So 5% said onions seem to bring them on. Nuts, and 4% said nuts seem to bring them on. 3% said chocolate seem to bring the AF on. 2% said ice cream. 2% said spiced food. Uh, cream, uh, so 1% said cream, strawberries, fish, sweets, beans, shellfish and garlic. Um, and about 15% said, look, we couldn't identify any of this triggering factor. So I hope this is useful because, uh, you know, when you're searching for your own triggers, uh, you may want to think about what other people have found as their own triggers. So in some way, you know, you may not necessarily think, oh, well, you know, that um, that fish I ate brought it on. But at least in one out of this hundred, uh, one patient out of the hundred, he felt that the fish brought um, his symptoms on. So it may just be worth thinking of these um, possible triggers and seeing which one uh, could potentially be triggering it for you and then trying to avoid that can only make things a bit better so I hope this was useful um, uh, I'll try and do some more videos later on this week uh, and I'll try and do a live Facebook chat so if you want to get in touch with me please visit www.yourcardiology.co.uk I have a Facebook page where you can just type in Sanjay Gupta uh, or you can type in yourcardiology at gmail.com and this is how you'll find me. I have a Twitter page which is your cardiology um, and uh, I would be very very grateful if you'd consider um, liking, sharing, commenting on this video because it just increases sort of the you know increases the the, the traffic and uh, that makes me feel good. So thank you so much and all the best. Bye.